Um, I'm going to apologize. I live on a highway, so there's going to be some background noise. So just again, for those who just um, who just signed in, we're asking you to rename yourself to just your preferred pronouns. This is an option, um, and it's part of the experiment that is this session. And I have the uh, collaborative slide deck link if we wanted to put that in the chat too as people are showing up yeah i was thinking we could do that once we have One to start putting media in yeah does that sound perfect good? perfect all right i think we can go to the next slide okay so i put this in the um in the chat as well um our land acknowledgement and we're keeping this vague a little bit vague on purpose but we live in the united states on stolen land through forced removal genocide and ethnic cleansing as communicators we're working towards understanding and defining the difference between anti and decolonization of science and communications um, and then please abide by the code of conduct and um this whole session has um been uh, an experiment from the start between my co-presenter and, and me, and um, it continues to morph and grow. So we hope that you keep an open mind um, and just give it a try and have a little fun with us. <laughs> Go ahead, Ali, or friend. <laughs> so welcome everybody to uh, this experiment that we're calling Conversation as Caring. Uh, inquiry approaches to decentralize power, promote critical dialogue, and build up belonging. We made it. We're in this space together. Um, this is going to be, uh, it, it might be challenging at some times in this space. We're going to try to turn up the stress knob a little bit in a conscientious way, but this is at the very most a foundational safe space. And I welcome everybody to being here. Saskia, do you want to, okay to move on or you want to say anything else about this first slide? Okay, cool. Okay to move on. So in part of um, acknowledging a, a space together in this digital platform, there really can be a sense of belonging and community established in these digital platforms. Uh, I'm sure everybody's experiencing some form of that as they're going through these different sessions today. The mode that we're trying to access today and really represent uh, a foundational attitude is the sense of that everybody can learn, everyone can learn from anyone. And we're gonna start this off with um, this, uh, submitting a word to a word cloud. So we're gonna put a link in the chat for everybody that has a code that's at the bottom of the slide that we're sharing right now. And it's just one word that we're asking everybody to put in. And it's really what sort of resonates with you from your own lived experience, from your own perspective, when you hear and read the words, everyone can learn from anyone. So we'll just take a few minutes at this point and we'll sort of let these words populate and hopefully there's something a little bit fun at the end that we can do with this as we generate these words together. Any music you want to share for two minutes? <laughs> Co-presenter. <laughs> yeah, and so we're putting, um, I, I put a link in the chat for a service called menti.com and that's where you'll input the word and the code is the number just beneath that link. So please click that link and you can submit there and it'll generate a word cloud for us. Thank you, thank you. I see some submissions. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to um, unmute or raise your hand and, and we can press them. All right, we're still getting a few submissions here. Let's wait another 30 seconds or so while people submit. Looking really good. Awesome. And actually, what I kind of wanted to do in this slide as well. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> some nature sounds? Yeah, some nature sounds. Sure. If you're able to hear this, we are playing some nature sounds while we wait here, just to kind of, again, it's all about a vibe. So for those who came in late, we're asking first that you rename yourself to just your personal pronouns. That is an option um, and it's part of the experiment. And then 
afterwards, please um, go to menti.com. It's a link in the chat and submit a word that you associate with this idea that everyone can learn from anyone. And there's a code there um, to submit that word through menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com. Yep, just need to put the link in the chat again. That's right, the chat doesn't, there we go. So we'll let that kind of go in the background, generating cool. a word cloud. Um, one thing I also wanted to do, I'm not sure how this is gonna work uh, here, but I'd like to know who here relies on asking questions from other people um, in order to conduct their work. So professionally, who here relies on asking questions, gathering, please raise your hand as we have one demonstrated here. Please raise your hand if you rely on gathering information. Exactly, great. Is there a way for me to see? Hmm. To see all the participants? Okay, I can kind of go through. Wow, okay. Quite a bit. More than half. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I see like about a third. And so we're going to um, try together to um, work through a, a novel, maybe not so novel, but potentially a more humane way of um, engaging in conversation. Yeah, you can go to the fear slide. And um, what we're gonna ask is for you to lean into the fear of, um, of getting to know each other without knowing anything about each other, not even um, your name potentially, uh, not where you live, not what you do. So this is really questioning what, the, what expertise means. What does it mean to be an expert in something? Um, and to facilitate a conversation between two people uh, where, um, yeah, you don't know anything about them. So we, um, my co-presenter and I worked on an Ocean Classroom live event together between uh, two wonderful people. One of them is Aria, was Aria M. Mason, and she is the granddaughter of Gilbert R. Mason, who was instrumental um, in the civil rights movement and doing these wait-ins in Biloxi, Mississippi in the 50s and 60s, and um, instrumental in um, desegregating public beaches. And when we spoke to her, um, and the person she was conversing with, and my co-presenter who is here, was facilitating this conversation, this very, very loose, very humane conversation. Um, and Layla, so the person talking with her, a scientist, was talking about imposter syndrome out at sea. And this is how Arya responded. I want us to get to a place where we understand as a culture that sometimes we should embrace fear and see where it leads us. When you're feeling the fear, it's usually a good indicator that you're on the right track. If you're doing something with your life that doesn't make you wonder, can I do this? Do I have it? Can I go on? Maybe you're not doing the thing that is truly your purpose. And to have something like that come out of um, Science Communications, which was this Ocean Classroom Live event, felt very uh, powerful, especially to my co-presenter and I. So we're going to ask you in this um, session to lean into the fear of asking the tough questions. Yes, exactly. And just to um, make that small comment at the end of that, it's, there's something, the, the intent there is that there's something just beyond it. The, the, that type of questioning, there's something just beyond it that if we can access, we can potentially use our emotions almost as navigational signs on the path that we're on. So we can lean into them in different ways and actually use them in a, in a productive way. And that definitely reverts back to um, this idea of how we gather information and how we can, especially for those who use questioning as part of their profession and just who they are as a person, relates back to that as well. So in another, okay. oh, go ahead, Saskia. I'm sorry, sorry. co-presenter. Um, you can now stop raising your hand now that we have a good poll. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you for that. Um, so this is a little bit of a, um, again, in this experiment, there's a, there's a collaboration between different fields because 
just as inclusive science communication is not sort of representing one field, but this this, this mixing and this integration of, of many fields and many different approaches, and really this idea of multiple ways of knowing, not really this idea, but this way of being, understanding that there are many different ways of knowing. One of the areas that I'm pretty close to is media literacy. And basically what this comes down to is media literacy is just an approach to participating in contemporary society. And this GIF image here, this image of multiple screens and television sets sort of coming at us is a representation within media, a constructed message by myself of using someone else's constructed message to just show that and represent an idea that media is always coming at us. This is the world we live in today. It's a contemporary society of both reading and writing media. We are all readers and writers in this culture. So having media literacy skills actually gives us a different form of questioning those constructed messages and being aware of them. Now, what this does is this allows us to potentially counter negative effects of mass media. This allows us to add in elements of our own identity when we're using media to communicate with others and, and gather information. And this also allows us to kind of have a sense of play with how we can use media and kind of decentralizes the power that we all, many of us feel when we're, when media is coming at us, that there's a sort of inherent power to it. And there is, there's power in messages, especially when they're attached to media. So it's very important for us in the media literacy world, which is a transdisciplinary world to bring these approaches in other areas. And that's where I'm really excited to be exploring these in, inside of science communication, which is where I practice. And the second part to this is um, personal inquiry. So personal inquiry is defined by Bruce and Bishop in 2008 as learning that starts with lived experience. So going back to multiple ways of knowing, multiple ways of understanding. When we learn, when we ask questions about our world around us, if that comes from a personal place, from a lived experience, well, that is going to help us shape our learning and shape the world that we exist within, the spaces that we exist within, to help us work on real problems within our own communities. So by coming from a personal place and then asking questions from that place, that does help us solve real problems in our communities. Now you might be seeing a pretty interesting GIF image here and it's, it's supposed to be a little bit of a lighter moment, but it, this is an acknowledgement that there are many different worldviews out there. There are many different approaches to people experiencing their surroundings and how they ask questions of their world. And the reason why I have this GIF here is because there are people who sort of can disregard factual information, no matter how concrete we think the facts may be, and come at an approach to understanding with a different belief. It, 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 if it does not, uh, if the fact does not work with their belief, they may be able to deny that in an instant. And now how do we as communicators, how do we respond to that if we know that facts can't take us all the way that we need to go in terms of helping a message get through to someone? So that being said, one of the roles that we see ourselves today is as storytellers, just like this Barry Lopez quote here on screen. Barry Lopez is a journalist and an author. And we see ourselves as storytellers, as those who can, and everybody in this space, we want you to be storytellers as well, which are people who can create the atmosphere in which wisdom can reveal itself. Going back to this idea that everyone can learn from anybody. So this is an important slide for us. This is when we're gonna have everybody sort of um, become a participant in this space now. So what we're gonna to try to do, and again, this is an experiment, so work with us a little bit here, is what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna give everybody a few minutes to go behind the scenes and access a piece of media that means something to you. That could be media that you've created. That could be media that um, you did not create, but it matters to you somehow. Maybe it's an image or something like that, but we want you to have that on hand. And we're gonna, work people into different breakout rooms and have partnerships that people can then share their media. But for right now, we're gonna pause here and take about three to five minutes. This is when that stress knob gets turned up a little bit. We're gonna take like probably three to five minutes to have people go off and to grab your own piece of media that matters to you. Co-presenter, do you wanna add anything here before we hit a break? No, let's go ahead. No, go ahead and um, yeah, it's just, important to find something that you've created. Um, and if, if that really isn't possible, then please do use Google, Google Images or Wikimedia or whatever means you have 
to gather some things. So five minutes, we'll, we'll just do a timer here. Maybe some music. So I think um, while we have this last minute here, can we go to our ground rules? And I'll go over this a couple times and if people have a question, then they can raise their hand. Um, oh, we have four raised hands actually. So why don't we um, go through the list here? Um, and we'll, list, we'll hear from Annette. I'm supposed to tell you what the media is? No, so you're just going to keep it on hand for our exercise in the breakout rooms. Okay. Yeah. Which I, do. I, I thought raising your hand was when you had it ready. No, that's for the breakout rooms. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And then um, I've just Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Okay, and then ASL. Okay, great. So it looks like. Um, I think you might need to make um, the the second interpreter put the spotlight on the interpreter. Okay. I can do that. It looks like there's a spotlight. Does that, is that right? Yes. All right, so we are done with those five minutes. Um, we're just going to go over and, and you, if, if you couldn't find something, you can please feel free to continue searching and, and just getting it onto your desktop or somewhere where it's accessible. Um, so a few ground rules. So about half of us or maybe over a third of us uh, do deal with asking questions of others to, um, as part of our professions. And so we have some ground rules in this. We're going to separate, we're going to put partners into breakout rooms and one person will be the interviewer and the other person will be the subject. And the subject will um, flash their media on um, your related um, breakout. We're going to share a link with you for the slideshow and then you'll find the number for your related breakout room. I'll tell you that in a second. But the ground rules are that for the interviewer, the person who is not flashing their media, you are simply typing out questions in the notes part of the slide deck, which we'll show you in a second. And as the subject, you're just listening. Um, and so the interviewer for five minutes, and you're gonna have to self-time within the 10 minute slot because you'll then switch. The interviewer for the five minutes will just write questions and you can kind of think of them out loud. We'll demo here in a second. And the subject will just listen. And the point is not to discuss or judge or answer or seek answers in your questioning. It's just to come up with a line of inquiry that digs deeper and deeper and deeper, prompted by a visual piece of media. Um, anything else on that front, co-presenter, before we demo this? If it, sure thing. If it doesn't make sense at the moment, we hope that it does in a few minutes. I think modeling this is gonna be important for people. So I think we can just jump right into it. All right, let's do it. Okay. So that's here. That's actually the wrong one. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I deleted it. Do you have, are you in this new slide deck? Let me see here. Sorry, everybody. One second. Would you mind putting that back in the chat? Oh, yeah. The slide deck? Yeah. I'll share the most recent. There we go. And all of you will access the slide Thank deck you. as well, but let us demo first, please. And is anybody else having um, issues with seeing the interpreter? I'm going to try and. OK. I'm going to pin. I'll, I'll contact V Fairs and see what we can figure out. OK, so I've pinned the interpreter. Hopefully that helps. All right, can you see ahead. the screen share again? 
Yes, I can see it share. Okay, perfect. So from here, this is now my opportunity. My co-presenter has brought a piece of media. So I am initially gearing up with a bunch of questions. Now it's my job to write those questions down. So I'm going to be doing that. And what I'm going to do just to make sure that people can actually see this is go out of presenter view and be able to write my questions down here and share my window. So this is the media that I'm trying to now gather information around and resist all of these other urges to figure out and, and start adding labels to this piece of media that my co-presenter brought to the table. So some examples here that I can do. Is this a way to see your world is one of my questions. Why this angle of the image? Is this a family home that has multiple meanings or history? And feel free when you're doing this. Oh, go ahead to just use shorthand i'm a very bad typer so you know we don't want to, um, to be um, excluding people who can't type very well or who feel nervous about that so you can also just type in the speaker notes or you can jot notes down in a piece of paper somewhere um, you yourself will have to reference these questions a little bit later And as the subject, it's it's tempting to answer, <laughs> and that's really not the point here. Ready to move on to the next? Yeah. I feel okay with this. I think I can gather some information with your media at some point if we were to answer these questions. That sounds great. So now moving in. So you will have taken five minutes for your partner and then now you flip roles. So now um, my co-presenter will flash a piece of media and I will then ask questions. So I'm actually just going to ask mine out loud for this for this demo. I like that. Um, just to give you an idea and just because I also don't feel comfortable typing. <laughs> so um, <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> what does this conjure up for me? So. Is this an event? Is this a serious event? Um, does this person mean something to you? Um, does, do you feel something about this person? Um, is this person integral to your, to your life, to your personal life, to your professional life, to your family life? Um, and what I'm attempting to do is is forget what I know about my co-presenter here. You know, hopefully you won't know the person you're partnered with in the in the breakout rooms. But um, who took this photo? What time of year was it? So when was this? What year was it? Um, <clears throat> how does it make you feel when you think about the moment this was taken? Were you present? Um, If there are any negative feelings, would you be open to walking me through them? And I just, yeah, I, I want to know what this person makes you feel. And so we have a question here. Um, are we supposed to use a still image? For now, yes, we ask for a still image. Um, although if you have a moving image, you know, a GIF or, or something similar, of course, feel free to, to share that as well. That's pretty open. Anything that is um, visual and you know that you're able to share virtually. 
So that was us demoing for you. We can go to the step one slide. And what I'm gonna do, again, is um, it seems like some of you have already joined the slide deck. Um, I'm gonna link the slide deck again into this chat. So if everybody can um, access that Google Slides, um, just click on this link. And um, so now we're all, we're all behind the scenes. You can see what, the, what, our, what our remaining slides look like. But more importantly, um, we wanna just walk through this step. So I'm gonna separate everybody out in, as partners into different breakout rooms. Um, and hopefully that will work technically. And what you'll do is you will actually drop your piece of media. So we've um, created slides per breakout room and drop your piece of media as the first person going. First you agree, okay, I'm gonna go first with the media, I'll be the subject and you be the interviewer. First you decide who does what. Um, and then you will drop your piece of media into your slide and the other person, the interviewer, will then write questions into the notes or you can speak them out loud um, and five minutes will go by and then your second half, the second five minutes, you'll switch roles so you can delete your media and the other person will upload their media onto the slide. Um, any questions about how that will work? Just raise your hand. And is anybody having problems accessing the slide deck? Okay. What are we supposed to? So you can type the questions in um, the speaker notes below the um, the slide, or inside you can the slide type it deck. inside the slide deck, or you can type it right on the slide if you just make a text box on the side of the media, or you can write it. Great. Okay. Um, so I'm going to attempt this breakout room thing and uh, let me know if there are any issues. I think you can always return to this main room um, and we'll try to set up timers as well. So I'm going to open all the rooms. And just before we do that, uh, is there anyone who needs ASL interpretation for their breakout? Um, you can, if you do, you can first use this space. You can use the main space. But if there is someone, another group uh, that needs ASL interpretation, we have um, one other ASL interpreter available who could join a breakout. You're, so, you've kept very good time in there. Yeah. I know it's if not. You've done this once or twice before. <laughs> Perfect. People are now on their way back. Awesome. All right. So, I think ready to just go into the next one? Yeah. Okay. So now this, this is an important one. So as we go back to this idea of everybody learning from anyone, now that we've shared personal media, we've shared media that we've created, media that matters to us with someone that we potentially didn't know coming into or hopefully you did not know each other before you joined and before you were in this partnership. So Part of media literacy is when we use media messages, we, are, we, we do construct those. All media messages are constructed. And it's very important as we bring our sense of identity, um, as we promote dialogue through messages, through using media, there's fun ways that we can do this too. So creating media is a very important part about using media and understanding media. So here's what we're gonna do. And we'll adapt the time again, because we need to just move along a little bit. So we'll see how far we can get with this, but it's gonna be a very similar approach. Now you're all trained up in how to do this. We're gonna ask you to go to giphy.com. We'll go back into our breakout sessions. We'll put this in the chat, giphy.com in the chat. And what we're asking you to do is to now create with your message, with your inquiry, create a piece of media, find a piece of media through this online search database of media uh, images and find a Giphy or Jiffy that resonates with your intention or your inquiry and then put that into your own slide. And Does I say we sense? go for it since we since we have yes. about six minutes. So yeah, go to Giphy.com and, and with just with one keyword, you'll find this. And let's give us three minutes. <laughs> Can you keep time again? You got it. Amazing. All right, I'm going to open the rooms. And I hope people enjoy the Larry David, my Larry David gift. Yeah, we all have nice thoughts, but we never, maybe we don't act on them all the time. 
here's our chance to act. Well, one way if, awesome. okay, everybody's back now. Yeah, if, if, for those who still want to share their GIF on the slide deck, one way to do it is you, you just drag and drop actually. So you drag the GIF up and you go to the tab that is the slide deck and then you just drop it in. And at yeah. this point, I think that we can just have the GIF show up in any of these slides. Just let it be a bit of a free for all in the sake of, yes. the sake of time because we have negative time. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so um, we, we don't really have time to do the group reflection, but I just wanted to um, maybe, would you mind going to the slide with the, with the word cloud? It's the next slide. Yes, this is a big so this is sort of, you know, our original intention around this idea that everybody is an expert, that you can learn from anyone. Um, and these are the words that you all came up with. And it seems that humility sort of came up as, as one of the, you know, most repeated words and then growth and open minded, maybe community. Um, and that's what this, at least for me, this exercise helps me understand that um, sometimes you don't really have a catalyst or a, a nice prompt for a conversation. Um, and so I, I'm a I'm a science filmmaker, and you know I'm often in a situation where I'm the interviewer in front of a you know with a camera, um, and it's very hard to get into a, um, it's really hard to get into a rhythm with your subject, especially a scientist where um, you you feel like you have access to, to that person, um, and so I try to really engage in this caring conversation and trying to get to the humanity you know humanize their science so to speak the humanity in their science. Um, and so this is what this exercise is helping me to realize is that media itself and through this lens of media literacy is a way to, um, to push us to ask questions um, about, about through that, to ask questions about each other, but through a prompt, not from what we see or know about the person. I don't know your name. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you do. Um, all I know is the piece of media that you chose to share with me. Just wanted to thank everybody for their time. Sorry, I got a little cramped at the end, but just as a takeaway message, is we hope that you can understand a little bit of a deeper sense that if you can dig a little bit deeper, everyone can learn from anyone and that we all have different ways of knowing and experiencing your life. So thank you for your time. Thanks for showing up here. Thanks for being in this space with us and thanks for being part of this experiment with us. Thank you so much for everyone for coming and for our speakers round of applause. It was so exciting and interesting. Um, we will see everyone tomorrow at noon for our next session. Thank you.